2022 sure is blessing me with furry games. We got Mina the Hollower coming out soon. Tunic just came out. And this year, I myself discovered Biomutant. I don't know why people are saying this game is bad. I love the shit out of it. Look, you can make your own furry OC, make your own guns from scratch, and get turned loose in a huge open world. What's not to love? Uh, that's another video. What we're worried about right now is an indie Game Boy game. And when I say Game Boy game, I don't mean a game made to look like a Game Boy game. I don't mean made in Game Maker or Unity. I literally mean this is a game that plays on an actual gray brick Game Boy that you have to point directly at the sun's core to even see the screen. The game today is... <laughs> Busty Bunny the Bounty Babe, made by Okami the Wolf. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, this guy's a furry porn artist, and you're right. But when he's not drawing titties, he's developing games. He's already got one game under his belt that, according to him, did fairly well. And this will be his second publicly released game. You can find it on Indiegogo, where you can pledge money and sign up to get a physical copy with a box and manual. And man, there was a lot of effort put into both. But if you want to just play the game, you can download the ROM for free or play it on an emulator. I went the extra mile and decided to emulate the Super Game Boy and run it through there. Because why not? If I had this game IRL, this is probably how I'd play it. Get ready to see me get stupid with the color palettes. I spent way too much time fooling with that shit. This game is about a bounty hunter named Busty Bunny flying a space car to Planet Funny Number to capture an outlaw named Fanny Fennec and her goons. Man, I wish cars still looked like this. You know, from the invention of the car to the 40s, all the cars looked the same. And then in the 50s, they started doing cool designs and there were cool designs on and off for even the most mundane cars on up until the 90s and then one day the cars all look the same again. Is making cool looking cars not profitable anymore? This is a fucking Porsche! Dystopia looking ass. Maybe it's a 1984 model. <laughs> Bimbo Cola. Yeah, I drank some of that one time and look what happened. Well, this is definitely a Game Boy game and it doesn't hide it either. You jump, you shoot, you platform and that's it. It's a really simple game that even an idiot like me can play. An idiot who didn't know how to slide in Valis 3 even though the water tower clearly told me how to do it. But we're not going to talk about that! See, my dumbass is already messing with the colors. The controls took a little bit of getting used to because when you walk, you like build momentum and then walk full speed. It took a little getting used to, but I got over it. It just meant when I do long jumps, I have to build up a little momentum first. And it would have helped if I actually pressed the jump button. This was one of these games where I wonder if the reason I'm doing so bad in it is because I suck. Which is entirely possible. I got a game over in Animal Crossing. How do you even do that? There's not a big variety of enemies. There's just regular enemies. There's McDonald's french fries that float in the air that you can't kill. Then there's these bubble things that'll throw you around if you hit them. The levels are pretty well laid out. I never feel like I don't know where I'm supposed to go. It's all pretty linear. One thing I really like is the gun. It's pretty easy to rapid fire it. And the bullets seem to go past the field of view. So you could like kill an enemy that you haven't even seen yet. You know, they say a 9mm can kill from 1.2 miles away, but I can't get anybody to stand 1.2 miles away from me and prove that. Just give me somebody nobody's gonna miss, like a Smash player or something. I'll prove it. You wanna see what I'm talking about, about the build momentum and jump? You see what I'm doing here? I'm backing up, walking forward, and jumping. That's what you gotta do to do jumps in this game. I don't mind the character building momentum. It makes it more dynamic, but maybe speed up the time between going slow and going fast. So there's six levels with three stages of Piece, and the game has three bosses for you to fight. You got Dick Dingo. He attacks you with evil french fries and a gun. If you can stay moving and jump and shoot, it's not a big deal. Oh, a forest level. Let's see what we can conjure up for this. Well, hell, I was trying to make dirt and grass, but it looks like the shit zone. Let's see. Maybe. No. Oh, God. No. Who uses that yellow and blue one? Fuck's sake. Yeah, I can make this work. I can appreciate that even though the levels are linear, it's not just straight left and right. It's a lot of up down. There's a lot of up down. Just like jumping on a bad dragon. A lot of up down. Watch out for the fucking slot. Ah, damn it. Oh, wait, wait, shit. Damn! God, I'm sucking. And you go right back to the beginning of the level. There's no checkpoints. But they're small levels, so it's not that big of a deal. And you have infinite lives. I could say that Ukami did that. We don't have, like, three lives and no continues or some dumb shit like that. He could have went pure 90s with this and just had you have one hit, one life, no continue, start the whole game over, blah, 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 blah. But he didn't do that. And I highly appreciate it. New Game Plus, though? Uh...
Oh my god, look at this aiming. This is gaming aiming right here. I suck so much at this game, I'm making it look bad. Stupid coyote, you made my game look bad. The music is fine, to say the least. I don't know, I have a pretty high standard for chip tunes because I love Commodore 64 music. So, grain of salt and all that. I do think the music fits the game and the aesthetic and it helps sell the game as a Game Boy release made by a small developer in the 90s. So, it does what it's supposed to do. But for real though, you want to hear some Game Boy music? Jurassic Park and Robocop. Look that shit up. Pussy Puma! We had Dick Dingo, now we got Pussy Puma. What's the next boss gonna be? Jane Boobystein? Nah, it's gonna be Melanie melons, isn't it? That's a hell of a sprite though. Who mercy. In case there was any doubt in your mind, yes, there's porn of all these characters. I mean, what's a good furry game without some rule 34, am I right? I mean, let's be honest. How many of you are on E621 right now? Possibly browsing there while you're listening to this video. I know how y'all are. Houston, the snow lady has titties. Oh, we gotta do something about this color palette. Wow, cotton candy land. Oh, this one again. This one had to be a joke. Hey, that looks good. Except for the blue house. What kind a sick fuck lives in a blue house. I bet they serve blue waffles. I don't know why I have to kill these rats that are on the sleds. They're not hurting anybody. Busty Bunny, a cold-blooded murderer. I gotta say, as far as ice levels go, this is one of the best ice levels I've ever played because there's no ice physics! Thank you, Lord! For real, if these ski lifts would have been slippery, I would have shut the game off right here. But no shutting of games happened because, you know what? I like this game a lot. Despite its little small flaws, like the way this ground defies all laws of physics? This is a decent game. I don't hate it. It's really good. It's not too hard, not too easy. It's simple to the point it's doing one thing and it's only trying to be one thing and it's doing that thing very well. Just be a simple Game Boy platformer. Let's see what else we can do with the color palette. Yeah, Busty Bunny goes to hell! Oh shit, we got ZX Spectrum graphics going on. Wait a minute, this gives me an idea. CGA! CGA! Yeah, Busty Bunny on DOS, baby! Let's fucking go! I kept dying on this level because there was a pit right here, and every time I'd jump down, I'd fall in that damn pit. I think after about five or six times, I'd quit doing that. Buddy, you underestimate my insanity. Level 6-3. Fun fact, this level was so hard to begin with that Ukami had to go back and revise it because it was too hard. And I understand this is one of those you fuck up you die kind of levels. Makes me think of Bramble Blast. Remember that level? I will be honest though. If the hardest level in the game is the final level, you're doing it right. Just gotta make damn sure those french fries don't touch you because they'll toss you all over the place. Anyway, we're making progress here. You didn't see that. You didn't see that. All right, it's Fanny Fennec time, boys. And honestly, not really much to it. She is the hardest boss in the game, of course, but after you learn her pattern, as long as you get good at jumping and shooting, you can beat her pretty quick. Anyway, you beat the final boss, Fanny Fennec, and then you just drive off with her in a cage, and then spend all your reward money on horse racing. I sold half of my retro games because I had a gambling addiction. Remind me to tell you that story. Ooh, already setting us up for a sequel. Oh boy. You know what? I'll play it, because I played this one, and you know what? I like it. Good game. Yeah, the game doesn't blow my mind. Yeah, it's not the greatest game in the world. It has a few flaws, but you know what? Solid three out of five. Three and a half out of five. Yeah, I might actually buy the physical copy and play it on my real Super Game Boy. Yo, I should totally like attempt a speed run of this. I've never tried speed running before. I should see if there's any records yet. Well, that's Busty Bunny, a very furry, very tongue-in-cheek Game Boy platformer that doesn't claim to be anything more than what it is. And what it does, it does very well. I liked it. I think Okami has a bright future in game development, and he's already a super talented artist, so if you're over 18, you should go follow him. For real, he draws hot shit. Wait, that sounds negative. The hot shit, there we go. And that's gonna wrap up the video. I hope you guys will give the man your money for his Indiegogo and maybe buy a physical copy while you're at it. And while you're spending money, throw a few bucks at my Patreon. You'll get to see videos before anyone else, and you'll get to be in my stupid giz 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 gizgord. Discord, I'm tired, bye.